Well, I'm going to be getting into this message today, and it's a new series called, Is It Growing? Um, And i I got to be honest with you, as I prepared for this message, and and really, uh, usually by Thursday, I am pretty set on exactly what's going to be happening. And this morning, I had to reprint everyone's sermon notes out, so I'm hoping to to stay inside my jacket, uh, because I'm definitely sweating through it. So we're gonna jump. We're gonna jump in and just see where God is gonna take us. We're gonna be out of the uh, the out of Mark chapter four, looking at the parable of the sower. If you'd like to to jump there and look there as as we're gonna get into this, you know, Grace Church is committed to leading people into a growing relationship with. Jesus Christ. If you've been paying attention this year so far, we started a series talking about commitment to prayer. Then we talked to, we did a series on leading people, and now we're now we're talking about growing. Is our relationship with Jesus Christ growing? These next few weeks coming into to Easter, uh, I'm going to be focusing the message on finding perspective of the parable of the sower. In Mark chapter 4 specifically. This week we're going to look at the perspective coming from the seed. Next week we're going to be looking at the perspective of the sower. The following week we're going to be looking at the perspective of the soil. And then for Palm Sunday we're going to, we're going to talk about the stirring that the, that the sower and the soil and the seed all have to come together as one. And this is really what's going to be happening in this series. You know, in my experience... Understanding a person's culture is, is way more important than trying to understand their language. If I can come in and understand the language and I don't understand your culture and I offend you, you're done listening to me. But if I understand your culture and maybe struggle with the language, what I have found is that because I respected your culture, most people will try to help teach me and, and, and learn the language even, even better. What we don't want is we don't want to go anywhere and be an embarrassment to the gospel's sake. We we, we don't want to be an embarrassment to the culture. As we're talking about going on these different missions trips and and being able to go into these different areas, we don't want to be an embarrassment to the missionary. We don't want to embarrass ourselves. We really need to study and understand the culture of those different areas. I was very grateful that uh, Dr. Silsby covered for me up here, and, and he did a fantastic job preaching on leading people and nurturing, where he talked about influence. I, I got a lot of really good feedback. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Pastor Howell told me that you, when you ask someone to cover for you when you're preaching, you want that kind of response. It means that they did a really good job. And then it was nice that when I came back, people didn't say, when are you going on your next trip? They, they were saying they were glad to have me back. So uh, that was good. But his, but his message really did drive in a point is, are we influencing people? Are we leading people to have a relationship with Christ? Or does our influence cause them and lead them to, to not have a relationship with Christ? Jesus, And that's something that we need to be looking at. You see, to understand culture, we need to find perspective. Now, that does not mean just, be you, just because you find someone's perspective means you agree with it. When Michelle and I were in China, we, we, we tried to find the perspective of the communist government. We did not agree with it at all, but we needed to understand where they were coming from. When we would evangelize to Buddhists, we need to understand their perspective so that way we knew where our starting point was when we evangelized them about, the, about Jesus Christ. And so this is really what I'm asking for us to do these next few weeks as we read Mark chapter 4, is we look from the perspective of these different viewpoints. And today's viewpoint is the seed. If you'd please stand with me, we're going to read Mark chapter 4, verses 3 through 8, and then I'm going to jump down to 14 through 20 in the explanation. So this is Mark chapter 4, 3 through 8, and it starts off, listen, so I encourage us all to listen A farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up and the the plants were scorched, and they, they withered because they did not had any roots, other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain." 
Still other seeds fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, multiplying, some multiplying 30, some 60, and some 100 times. And then the explanation goes down to verse 14. The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, that's a point to maybe underline, because of the word persecution comes, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seed sown among thorns, hear the word. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop, some 30, some 60, and some 100 times what was sown. Father God, I ask that you give us ears that can hear the word, I ask you for a heart that can accept the word and that it can be produced some 30, some 60, and some 100 times what was sown today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. When we look at this, this, this uh, parable, there are some things that we need to pay attention to. And the first thing I, I look at, it, especially from the, the seed's perspective, is what choices did the seed have and what choices did it not have? And, and some of the, you know, one of the things that they did not have, the seed did not have a choice where it was sown, how it was sown, and when it was sown. Actually, the three choices that I'm going to be focusing on today of the choices that they did have was to produce what was on the inside, bloom where it was planted, and then to, to die to self. The first point is produce what's on the inside. To produce what's on the inside. You know, now, Jesus tells us the greatest commandment of all is to love the Lord your God with how much of our heart? All, all of it. How much of our mind? All. And how much of our soul? All. And he says that when we love God with all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our soul, the second command to that is to love our neighbor as Ourself. Now, honestly, I believe that, that that is the evident, the second command is the evident of the first command, that we have used all of our inside to love God and able to and learn how to be loved by God. I was very grateful for the 180 and the Emerge students who came up here, and they talked about leading people in purity, and it talked about love and the, and the pure ways that God loves us, and that we need to understand that God loved us first. That's what Dakota just talked about today. God loved us first, and we learn that love, and then we are able to love other people. You see, Jesus tells us the evidence of God's love is found in the fruit of of which we produce. And that's found in Matthew chapter 7, verses 16 through 20. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. We, we recognize people, we recognize even trees by the fruit that they produce. We moved into our house uh, a couple years ago now, I believe it is, and, and our neighbor had some trees, and, and we started noticing these beautiful fruits being, it's the best fruit of all, they're apples. And they, they, were, they were these trees that once they started producing these apples, we started seeing, oh, look, they have apple trees. And actually, they had three or four different varieties of apples, and I keep hoping the limbs reach over my fence, and then they're mine, I think, I hear, that's the law here. Uh, my sister, when she moved, she moved into a house and she knew she had fruit trees, but she didn't know what kind, and all of a sudden they started producing pears. And she knew, ah, I have pear trees. When we were in Monterey, 
uh, we were going, and all of a sudden we just started seeing fields and fields and fields of all of these oranges. And, and we knew that they were orange trees because of the fruits they produced. So we are known by the fruit that we, that, that, that we produce. And, and when we ask Jesus to be our Lord and Savior, he can change a bad tree that's producing bad fruit and turn it into a good tree that produces good fruit if we, the bad tree, can put to death our sinful ways and our bad ways, be born again, be born into his likeness, into that good and rich type of likeness, and then we can start producing things that are good. We stop producing the bad fruit, and we start producing the good fruit. But the only way for us to do that is because of Jesus Christ. It's that working that he has in us. It's because of the Holy Spirit, the evidence that is working in us, that we are able to produce things like love and hope and peace. Joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, I, I think that we on ourselves, we try to produce those things, but what it really what ends up happening is we get so focused on the outside that we actually look like that plastic fruit that people put on their tables that really all they are are just pretty to look like. There's nothing on the inside. But when we allow the Holy Spirit to start working and changing us, then we can start having not just imitation fruit, but having real fruit. Our fruit will tell everyone if we're loving God with our everything or if we're just loving him with our something. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. Sometimes, before we can get to everything, we got to start with something so start to keep with the something. Don't think, oh, I can only love them with this much. Keep with it. Keep at it. Keep stirring. Take your something and turn it into our everything. And we can only do that again with the power of God working and stirring in us. And I, I think what happens is if, if, you, if you don't like what you're saying and what you're doing on the outside, don't lose heart. Start looking and asking God to help making changes of things that are happening on the inside. Look to see what kind of seeds that we're planting and, and, and planting into our heart and looking at the things that we are producing and try to find the root and follow that root down to the seed. If, if we're looking at the, these, this anger, we're easily to be angered, we're easily to worry, we're easily to find it and trace it down to the seed and remove that seed and ask Jesus to plant in a good seed. I believe the body follows what the heart desires, but the heart can only desire the appetite we feed it. What kind of appetite does our heart have today? A seed can only produce what is on the inside? The second point is bloom where you are planted. Now, as I have told you this before, um, our, our exit out of the orphanage that we ran for nine years, our exit out of China, it, it, it was really bad. And uh, I, I, to be honest with you, just to be very vulnerable with you, I ha we have scars that, that they are pretty deep that we're still healing from today. And praise God for his healing process. But when we came back to the States, um, to the United States in 2020, we came back. You see, in, in China, they call America, the United States, beautiful country. But when we came back, it, it, we did not come back to a beautiful country. We came back to political turmoil. We came back to racial turmoil. We came back to a gender crisis. We came back to, to the woke thing happening. And, and we really came back... Though, though we called it the United States, we never experienced such division that we've seen. We might as well call us the divided states. And I don't know that it has changed much since then. And this division was not only found on the outside with the worldly people, but unfortunately when we started coming into the body, we saw that division within the church. And, and I, man, that, that hurt worse than it was on the outside. You'd go out and you'd try to evangelize to, to, the, to the world, and they would say, why do we need to listen to you when Christians are acting just as worldly as we are? What division, what hurt 
all, all these things that we just couldn't wait for our boys to be able to experience. And honestly, was, I heard from one of them, they said, I'd rather go back to communist China than live here in this, this divided area. And so with all of that, i, I got to be honest with you, a bitterness towards America started growing in, in our hearts. And so Michelle and I, we, we, we would go for these prayer walks, and, and we were wrestling with where and, and what and how. And again, God's saying, you're focused on the wrong thing. That, those aren't your choices. What your choice really needs to be more focused is on who do I want you to be. And he reminded me of a, of a prayer that I prayed when I first got saved. And, and my heart was, I started, I started getting into this word and I started seeing the truth and I started seeing the, the, just the life in this word. And I remember telling Michelle one day, uh, would it not be so amazing to just live a life day in and day out where you could read this word and live a life of ministry that you can just minister to people and show them this life and show them this light? That would be just so amazing. But I never thought that I was worthy of that kind of calling and that kind of life because of the background that I had. And so God started impressing on me as we were going on these prayer walks uh, that this parable of the sower, he impressed on me how, how my, my, my heart was not... Not, not to be a missionary, not to go to China. It wasn't after a title or a position that my heart has always, since becoming to know who he is, is in a life of ministry to help people who are hurting. And, and that's what he started reminding me of. And, and, and so we, we were going and walking, and, and it was around springtime, and, and, and the spring flowers were starting to bloom. But you know all we could focus on? Poor me and how much we don't like it here. And so, so God impressed again on my heart uh, an encounter that we had with this, uh, this American woman that came, uh, came over to China, and, and, and we were standing on the second floor, and we were looking down at our kids, and, and as this group of people, we were praying over these kids, and they were just having a blast. There was, there, you could just see the joy that they had. You could see the hope and the love and the security that these kids had, and this woman just started weeping. And she said, you know, I, I left America thinking that with all of its beauty and all of its conveniences and all of its freedom, I'll go to an orphanage in China and, and be able to show them joy because I'm an American. And these kids, these orphans, have more joy than I have ever experienced in my life. And I want what they have. And, that, and God started just stirring within me, and I started reminiscing on that, and he impressed a, a question and a, and, a, and a statement that cut me to the soul. He said, Ben, did you even notice the flowers that were blooming that you just walked past? That same joy that was spread in China is desperate to be experienced here in the States. Son, I want you to bloom where I, the creator of all things, have planted you. Stop complaining where you are, but bloom where you are planted. You see, in this parable, the seed, it didn't get lost in anxiety. It didn't get lost in depression or anger or worry or fear or bitterness. What did it do? It tried blooming on the rocky places. It tried blooming in the thorns. It tried blooming in the good soil. Why was a seed able to do that? Because that was its job. Its job was to, be, to bloom wherever the sower scattered it to bloom. He had such trust in the sower that said, hey, if you place me in a place like this, I'm going to I'm going to do what you call me to do. I'm going to stop complaining about where I am. I'm going to do what you call me to do, and I'm going to bloom where you planted me. And I don't know if you caught the miracle of this story. A lot of the times, all we do is focus on that 30, that, that 60, that 100. And, and, but you know what? That's not a miracle. That's reaping what we sow. When you work a good soil and you plant a good seed into that, it's going to produce 30, 60, 100 times. That's just its, it's, its job. That's what it does naturally. That's not a miracle. 
The miracle to me was the seed that was scattered on those rocky places. It said it sprang to life. That's an impossibility. But yet with God, all things are possible. You know, I don't, I don't know your story. I don't know how, how you came in today. I don't know the, the, the calluses and, and the scars and, and, and the hurting that you have covered your heart in an effort to protect your heart. I, I want you to know the seed that is being spoken right now. It, it, it's trying to penetrate through all of that hurt trying to get in to the good soil of your heart. And I want every one of you to know that every single one of you on the inside, it is good. God loves you so much. This is good in here. But, but we've allowed the hurts and the pains of yesterday and the, and, and the worries and the fears of tomorrow to cover our heart, and, and we're protecting ourselves from being hurt. And we're actually blocking the good word to come in and make a change in us, and, and to direct us who God wants us to be. And so I wanted to let you know today, no matter if you accept this word or not, it is good, and it's trying to get in, and it's trying to produce, but I think some people, they're going to leave it right there along the pathway. It won't even make it out of the sanctuary. Some people, it may not even make it into your car. It may not even make it out of the parking lot. But the hope is, is that it not only does it leave it, it makes it here into your car and past the parking lot, and it makes it into the grocery store, into your neighborhood, into your families. I pray to God that this, this word will start blooming wherever you go and wherever God brings you to, that you will bloom where you are planted, that it will produce some, some things that will be 30, that will be 60, 100 times of what is sown right now. You see, Michelle and I, we had to come to realize that we had to face the hurt, face the pain, not focus on it. We had to face it and recognize that if we, will, we own those hurts and pains or otherwise they're going to own us. And so then what we really had to do, those hurts, those pains, and those disappointments, we had to own them and not allow them to have any grip. They would not be planted in here. And then we had to surrender them. We had to surrender for God's will to be done. Jesus sweat great drops of blood in his agony to be in God's will. What are we willing to do? The third point is die to self. John chapter 12, verse 24 says, Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seed. You see, this is the word of God. This is good seed. But when we just keep it closed up, and put on a shelf and never reading it, when we take that seed and we keep it in its bags and we keep it in its containers, never going and never planting it, never planting it, it just remains a seed. A seed for it to change, it needs to, it needs to be planted. It has to die to self to be born again and produce many more seeds. I would say this seed has to be willing to be transformed, to be changed into, from a seed into a root. Our mentor in China told Michelle and I that, that our dreams, they have to die before they can come alive. We, we, were there, the, the, we were there in this one town, and we were volunteering at this orphanage, and I was teaching English, and, and after about a year of us being there, that mentor said, okay, you guys can go uh, and start looking, but you really, you guys need to pray before you go. Really know what you want. And so we were praying, do we want to go to a big city? Or do we want to be in a little t city? Do we want to go into, do we want to go to be in, in a place, what kind of orphanage do we want? Do we want to help hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kids where all we're doing is feeding them? 
Or are we trying to slow down and help and make sure we make a bigger impact and make sure they have education and make sure they come to know who Jesus Christ is and, and, and take a little bit slower time, but the, the bigger the impact is going gonna, is gonna to be able to be a bigger impact in those areas? Are, are we going to be in a place where there's already an orphanage or are we going to go into a place where there's no other hope in those areas? You see, we, we are praying about all of those things. I think what happens sometimes is we get real excited about things, and sometimes we jump into them without actually thinking or praying about them. We, we, we need to be willing to slow down, plan it out, pray things out, and get a clear word from God. I think if you read this parable, some seed was scooped up by the birds, never having time to produce. Some seed did not have anything to plant their roots in and were scorched and withered away. Some seed were choked out by the thorns, not having any room to grow. Only the seed that fell into the the good soil was able to produce the multitudes it was created for. I wonder if this sower, if he would have spent more time and he focused more on the soil taking those rocky, hard places and, 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 and working it and, and pulling out the, pu- pulling out the, the thorns and, and working the soil, all, making it all good, that he would have got a, such a, a better investment for the seeds that he scattered. You know, the seed, the seed had to be still and know that God is in control of every situation. It did not dream about being scooped up by the birds It did not dream about being planted where it could not put down its roots. It did not dream to be in a place amongst the thorns being choked out. The seed's dream was to be in the good soil to produce a crop a hundredfold what was planted. You know, our, our, so, so we, after our first year, we started, we knew what we wanted and we started going to all these different governments and traveling to all these different areas and we'd come to them and say, this is what we will do for you. This is what our organization does. We want to come in and we want to start an orphanage and, and, and we'll, do, we'll gather the kids, we'll pay for this, we'll pay for that and, and we'll come in and do it. And we, we explained everything to them and always the question was, how much money are you going to give me? And we said, we're not going to give you any money. Door in the face. How much are you going to give me? Door in the face. How much are you going to give me? And we're saying, look, we're not going to give you anything. We're trying to take your burden and turn it into a blessing. Door in the face. And this is when our mentor reminded us and said, sometimes your dreams have to die so that God can resurrect them and that God gets all the glory You see, pride is really a stumbling block that keeps us down. It is humility is that brings us up. This is what James chapter 4, 10 says, Humble yourself, surrender yourself, die to self before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Our job is to humble ourselves. God's job is to lift us up. But me spends too much try, time trying to lift me up. We have, we have to stop telling God how to do his job and then stop expecting God to do our job. When we surrender, die to self, be willing to allow God's will to be done, the impossible can be possible. And so our second and third year in China, we were looking and looking and searching and searching for where we could open an orphanage, and it just broke our heart because here we are trying to help these children, but these grown adults, all they could think about was selfish things about money. And so we, we came to the point where we were like, well, we have a choice. We did not know the statement, bloom where you're planted at that time, but we had the choice of saying, we can just quit and go home, and we would go home as failures. Or... We just say, you know what? What we're doing right here at this first orphanage, volunteering, just loving on these kids, helping the, that minister out there, uh, teaching English to, to, these, to these kids, you know what? That's, that's pretty amazing. Let's, let's try our best to do everything we can right where God has us. And if God wants us to do something greater, then God will open the doors for those places. But until then, let's do whatever we can. They'll bring glory and honor to his name. And when we surrendered all of that, and I'm telling you within a very short period, maybe two weeks, 
And in China, that's really, that's really fast. It moves slowly over there. Within two weeks, we got, a, we got an email from this government that said, we have been searching, and we have been looking, and we found your organization, and, and, and we are in such desperate help. Actually, we're in such desperate help that we have, and they told us all the things that they prepared that we said that we would prepare. And so we are so desperate for your help. Help us help you help these kids. And so God opened that door, and that's where Michelle and I opened that orphanage and, and ran that orphanage for, for nine years, blessing that, that area. And our mentor, he was there for 20 years, and he said he had never experienced such favor with a, a government there and, and their passion to help the little kids. But see, I think what happens is we have to make sure we die to self. We let go and let God be in control. And when we do that, all things are possible. The takeaway for this is I'm going to tell you about this seed. You see, this seed had to die to the patterns of this world. The patterns of this world telling me that with my education or really their lack of, with, with my kind of background not growing up in a church, with, with my speech problem, which caused me a little bit of a learning disability, that I cannot, I should not, and I will not stand before people and preach the gospel. That I will not be able to do the things that, that I really honestly know that what God brought me to is what God has brought me through. And I get overwhelmed by his favor and, and, and his goodness, and just to think and that, 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 we, that we just went to Mexico and preached the gospel, which I'll share about next week, and now I have been able and been so privileged that in four different countries, I've been able to go and preach the gospel and lead people to have a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. I did that in my speech problem. I did that in my, in all, through all the insecurity because I knew I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Going to these churches that they've been pastoring longer than I've been alive, and yet they're asking me to come in and speak and train them and teach them. And I think, well, God, what you bring me to, I'm going to bloom where you've planted me. I'm going to show my heart. I'm going to show the great things that God has done through someone like me. And I want to tell you something. If God can work and use someone like me, if God can use a sinner like me, just think about what he can do through saints like you if you're just willing to surrender and let God be in control of your everything. And so ultimately, to answer the question, is my relationship with Jesus Christ growing? Another question has to be asked, and you can only be the one to answer that. Are you taking God at his word or not? Do you believe that God loves you? And if so, what are you going to do about it? Are you willing to bloom right here, Grace Church, where God has you planted? I would even challenge you to say, if you've not been planted, get some roots in. You're coming here. Get involved. Get in growth track. Bloom where God has you. Or otherwise, you're just really wasting your time. We're very grateful that you are here. We wanna, we wanna, we're, we're glad that you're, you've been gathering. We're glad that you're, you're growing. And we want to we wanna send you out to go. But you've got to get grounded in his word. You've got you to gotta get planted and then bloom where you are planted. So I'm going to pray. And I'm going to ask for everyone just to stay seated because I'm going to ask after I pray, I'm going to ask uh, Kirk and Aubrey to come up. I have an announcement for this, for them. Father God, I pray as, as we're getting close to Easter and we're getting close to the, the Palm Sunday and the stirring, from the seed's perspective, we all are seed, God. I ask you to help us to look on the inside. What changes do we need to make so that way we can be producing a fruit that brings you glory, honor, and praise. 
God, I think we've spent too much time complaining about where we are and becoming bitter of who's around us instead of being just so focused on what you want us to do, to bloom where we are planted, to shine bright for your glory, not ours. So I ask you, God, to forgive us of our sins. Help us to have a a personal, growing relationship with you. Help us to take this word, let it get past the, 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 the side of the road. Let this word get past the hard, rocky places that have been covering our heart. Father God, I pray that it gets past the sin that's been choking out this word. And when we, when we repent and remove those thorns, remove those rocky places, that let that word, that seed, get buried deep into the goodness of our heart and help us to become more and more like you. And let us shine bright so that this word will multiply some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching this message today at graceweb.tv. If you're looking for previous messages or message series, you can find them by clicking the archive link on the message page of our website. If you need to connect with us, send us an email at gracecentral at graceweb.tv or send us an online connect card, which you'll find in the online forms page of the website. If you'd like to support the church financially, you can do so by clicking the Give button, or you can text the word Give to 618-414-4220. Thank you again for being a part of Grace Church.